Lord now with the ministry of giving. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Now watch this. Let him that is taught in the word communicate. You know what communicate? You're supposed to communicate to your pastor. Unto him that teaches you all good things. Is your pastor teaching good things? Okay. So he's supposed to, supposed to be communicated. Now, what you got to do with it, you got to do with the Holy Spirit when you should do that and when you should not do that. But it says, let them that, that is taught in the word communicate unto them that teaches all things. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mock. But whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. But he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap. What, what are you going to reap? You're going to, see, the flesh does nothing but corruption for you. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. What verse is in? Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we don't give up or we don't cave in, guess what? We're going to reap. Verse 7 in the mirror. So business, does not so business does not deceive God. Do not let us stray and then pull your nose up at God. As if God who, next verse, let you down. The harvest always be built in the seed. Now, what's, what's going to happen there? Your harvest is measured by your seed. You can, you can weigh your, you can weigh, am I getting anything? Am I planting anything? You don't give to get. You give because God tells you to give. Amen? But your seed represents what you're sowing into. If you don't put nothing in the stock market, what are you going to get out of it? Amen. You're going to get nothing out of it. Give over to God. Glory to God. Well, let's, now, those that brush your orphan envelopes, you can put, up, put it up on the screen, orphan envelopes, give you the opportunity to give. God loves a cheerful giver. And I'll show you the scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures in the Bible about giving. There's more, it, you, you almost take the Bible away if you take away the giving. Amen? Amen. So now, you're at home, you, are you here? You can go to w.faithlove.org, click on Give, or you can go to www.robertcorporate.org for your partnership. Text Give is 973-355-7719, or you may mail it to 380 Broad Street, North New Jersey. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. So whatever God tells you to do, we're not going to pressure you because there's benefits of giving. God set this up. Now, if God set it up, he has a purpose in setting it up. He has a purpose for your life in setting it up. He has a purpose that he does everything. Amen? Glory to God. Father, we thank you that the people are givers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you glory and give you honor and praise. We thank you, Father, this world will be so on good ground and that we will bear fruits in the hearts of people. In this message, Father, I pray all of you and none of me right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that people would get a great understanding of what's being said today. And they would not just be doers of what they do today, but they will go out and be doers of it. We give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to Hebrews 11, verse 12. We're going to start up today. We're going to repeat this again, but watch this. We're supposed to rest. God, God is resting. Think about it. He's resting now. But we're supposed to rest in his labor. He said, let us labor, therefore, to enter his rest. How do you enter in God's rest? How do you enter? I beg your pardon? How do you enter in God's rest? You labor. That's where you come in labor in the word. Only thing you're supposed to do is labor in the word. Therefore, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, 
lest any man fall the example of unbelief. Now, how did, how, how did they fall in unbelief? Because they didn't do what? They didn't labor. Unbelief is the result of not laboring in the Word. That's what it's about. Glory to God. Now, Galatians 2.20. Now watch this. And I, I quoted the scripture many times before, before I ever got into grace. And I used to quote it all the time. And I just said, we live by the faith of God. We live by the faith of God. And I kept saying it. And I kept saying it. And I kept saying, now why am I saying that? But watch this. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I live. Yet, yet not I, but who lives in me? Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live how? By the faith of. He didn't say I live by the Son of God. I live by the faith of who? Of the Son of God. Who loved me. Now notice that. He, he, why did he do this? Because he what? He loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for you? For you. Amen. Now, Galatians 2.20, the New Living Translation. Watch this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives where? In me. So I live this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. Who do I trust in? I trust in the Son of God. Who loved me. He went to the cross for you. He loved you, me. And gave himself for me. That's why he gave himself what? For you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Philippians 2.13. Now I'm going to show you something. When you're in the grace or you're in the finish, you're not thinking about whether you sin or you don't sin. If you miss them all, you miss them all, you get back up and you try it again. What do you do? Get back up and try it again. You miss them all, you get back up and try it again. Now watch this. But it's, for God is working where? In you. How is God working? In you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what? Please him. Notice there, it says God gives you the power to do what's pleasing to him. God gives you the power to do what pleases him. I'll say it again. God gives you the power to do what pleases him. Not what pleases you. It might not please you at first. But in the long run, in the long run, it will please you. Because it's a, we coming from the world and things in the world that sometimes in the world are pleasing to you, but they'll wind up what? Your destruction. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm going to go back to Hebrews. Go back to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. There, there, there remain, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Everybody said, there is a rest for me. Verse 10. For he that entered into his rest. Now notice, you're entering into who, whose rest? God's rest. He also ceased from his own work as God did from here. You're going to cease from trying to work it out yourself. Amen? Now, you might have to do certain things. You might do certain things, but you shouldn't be trying to do, go over God situation. Amen? If God says it's done, it's done. And what you do, you stay in the finish. Everybody says, I'm in the finish. That's where you got to stay. But he that entered into his rest, he also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Verse 11. Now what? What, they, they, what did I tell you? I did 411. You go, go to the 411. You're right, 411. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into rest, lest any man should fall the example of unbelief. Now, go to four, uh, Hebrews 4 9. I apologize. 4 9. I 
Okay, I don't have no phone there. There remain therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10, I want to do it again. For he that entered his rest also have ceased from his own works as God did from his. Now, isn't that amazing? God made us his image after his likeness to do things just like he do things. Isn't that something? He put what he was in us. He put what he was in us. Amen. The mirror translation. Verse 10. This is off the mirror. Do you have the mirror? Huh? I didn't do the mirror? Huh? 410, I didn't do the mirror? I crossed it. I apologize. I apologize. I crossed it. I took it out. First Peter 5, 6. First Peter 5, 6. Humble yourself. That means you forget about yourself. You forget about you. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may do what? Exalt you in what? It's going to happen in due time. In due time. In due time, it's going to happen. Verse 7. Cast all your cares or your worries upon him, but he do what? He cares for you. Now, I did verse 7. Verse 7 in the mirror. Watch this very careful. Watch this very careful. The Hebrew. Take immediate action when it comes to distractions. Immediate action and cares. Fling them into the Lord. He got your back. He got your best or your back. I, a lot of times I used to use the illustration. I used to give you my Bible. I said, here's my cares. Here's my word. I don't take them back. What I do? I don't take it back. Next verse. Is it in the mirror? Interest at, he has, your, he has your, your best interest at heart, and he got your back. God got my back. I say it again. God what? He has my back. Now, notice that we're supposed to put an urgency on distraction. Um, Philippians 4, verse 7. Then you will experience God's peace. We could see anything we can understand. You ain't going to understand it. You ain't going to try to figure it out. You can't figure out God. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live where? In Christ Jesus as you live. Now, go to the mirror for a second. Watch this. Watch the mirror. And in the place of worship and gratitude, you will witness how the peace of God within your echo, what you say, the awareness of your oneness in Christ beyond what? Beyond, there's more verse, eh? Beyond the reach of any thoughts could it possibly unsettle you. Just like the central guard secure a city, watching out in advance for the first time, for the first time. Of a part, um, um, as I, for the first, there you go. Of any possible threat, your deepest tranquility of thoughts are fully guarded. God will protect you. He protects your thoughts. But a lot of times, we want to do it our way. You may say that, Lord. I'm going to say something. Adam, when he committed trees in the garden, 
you notice the devil did not go to Adam. The devil went to the woman. You want to know why? The woman's very sensitive. The, a lot of times women are sensitive to household needs more so. So he went to the woman because Adam liked the woman. He knew the woman had changed. And the woman told him to eat. And like a fool, he ate. And we're in the mess we're in now because he ate. A lot of times, I realize that women are very sensitive. Women, women are great. Woman came out of man. But understand, all of us in Christ, so what has to happen a lot of times, in the Bible, I notice, you notice a lot of times, God used men because the, the, the what else should I say it like this? The seed nature came with man. But guess what? We're all in Christ. There's neither male nor female in Christ. We're all one. But understand this. A lot of times, men, men are men. A woman, she tries to do some things. Some things she can do, men can do. Some things she can't. But some things a man can do, a woman can't do. A woman can have a baby. Man, he's not supposed to be having no baby. <laughs> Amen. Amen, not at all. Glory to God. Now, what did I tell you? Now, we're going to look at Chronicles. I want to show you something here. Second Chronicles, verse 2020. 20. Amen. And, they, and the next morning, the armies of Judea went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way of Jephthah stopped and said, Listen to me, all ye people of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, what did he say? Listen to me, all ye people. But they didn't listen. They listened. They listened, but some didn't. But think about this. Anytime, anytime God tells you to do something, most people not, might, not, might not agree with you. you. You don't need man's approval. You need God's approval. You don't need man's approval. You need God's approval. If God tell you, if God tell you that chair is green, you better bet your life on it, it's green. You might not see the manifestation of green yet, but it's going to come to pass. That chair is going to be green. Now watch me say. that. Believe in the Lord your God. What did he tell the people? Believe in the Lord your God. And you will be able to do what? Stand firm. You must do what? Stand firm. Believe in his prophet. And you will what? Notice there. You're going to succeed. If you believe in him. Verse 21. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers. Whoa, wait a minute. Worship and praise leaders. Singers to walk ahead of the army. What did, what did they do? They walked ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. Now, they're thanking God for what God has said that hadn't happened yet. Give thanks to the Lord for his faithfulness, faithful love, and do how long? How long does this do it? Forever. 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 Everybody say forever. Verse 22. You know, I'm not doing a lot of talking now, y'all. I'm, I'm, we're, getting, we, we, we're doing a lot of study. At that very moment, they begin to sing and do what? Wow. And the Lord called, now what, what, what did God call? God called the army of the Amorites and the Moab and the Mount Seir to start what? Fighting them. They start fighting against themselves. Think about that. They start fighting against themselves. Man, you don't talk about my mama like that. 
You see what I'm saying? They start getting at each other. They start killing each other. Now watch verse 23. And the army of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from the Mount Seir and killed everyone. And they had destroyed the army of Seir and they began to attack each other. They began to what? They began to attack each other. Each other. See, now what, what did they do? They praised God before it happened. Now guess what? You're in the finish. So if you're in the finish, what do you think you do? What do you think you do? You rest in the finish and you praise God before what? It, it, before it, it gets in this realm down here. You praising him because he's already done it. I'll say it again. You praise God because he's already taken, done it. You're in the finish. We're in the finish. I, I, I said this last week, that when you're in the finish, if you were brought up, you were born into the finish, you wouldn't know what this world was like. You want to know why? You're in the finish. You, 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 never, you never was in the other world, but you were, you were brought up in the other world. You were brought up in Satan, Satan's territory. So now you're going to the finish, and, and the finish looks strange. But it's not. Because guess what? You're in Christ now. Hello? I said, everybody said, I'm in Christ. That's who you are. Now, when Christ walked the earth, think about this. Christ walked the earth to show us how to do it. You know when the woman had the issue of blood, I mentioned this the other week too. When the woman had the issue of blood, Jesus, what did Jesus say to her? Thou what? Have made what? Whose faith made a whole? No, it didn't. It's his faith. It said die. Die mean his. The faith that Jesus had in him. Not Jesus, but the faith. I'll say it again. Not Jesus, but the faith. I'll say it again. Not Jesus, but the faith. She pulled, she pulled the faith out of him. Now watch this. And the army of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the armies of Seir, they began attacking each other. Verse 25 now. Watch this. Watch this. And King Jezephi and his men went out to gather up, what they do? Gather up plunder. They found vast amount of what? What kind of equipment? Vast amount of what? Equipment, clothing, and other valuables. More than they could carry. He got, they got more than they could what? There was so much plunder that took them three Days to collect them. Wouldn't you how, how you like that harvest? Three days to get everything. Took them three days. Now, but what did they do? They celebrate in, in Hebrews. Uh, I think it is uh, not Hebrews. Uh, which one is it? And I crossed it off before. He was 410. It said, we're supposed to celebrate the victory. If we're in the finish, we're supposed to celebrate the victory. If we're in the finish, what do we do? Rest. Rest and we do what? Celebrate the what? Victory. We celebrate the victory that God has already done it. We don't, not from the old school, from the old school, what do we do? We celebrate to get God to do something. God doesn't do nothing. God has already done it. So he's not going to do nothing. And every, every time you have a situation in your life that comes up, that's finished. The thought comes up. Remember I said something about this? 
and teeter about the distractions that come in, you got to put an urgency on it. When that, when that distraction comes in, deal with it. Don't think about it. Keep thinking. And you look around, you start thinking about that and thinking about this is due and that is due. Just sit around and say, it's finished. It takes just as much energy to say it's finished than to talk the problem. I'll say it again. You already know what the problem is. The little demon, the demons are already whispering the problem in your head. You all heard what I said? You already know the problem. Why you got to talk about it? You know, it, you, know, you know what's in that realm. You know what the demon trying to get you over into their realm so they can get you to say, I don't have, and God said he's done it. But the demon said, I don't have. And over here, it says it's done. The demon said, I don't have it. Over here, it says done. That's up to you. So you got to be in the done realm, the conclusion realm. Hello? So everybody say, I'm in the done realm. Now, I'll have to say this again. I want you to go to Matthew 11. And we, we had this on the side. Me and my wife, we wrote this. We wrote this when, I think we wrote this, we wrote this, I guess, the, before we even knew about grace. And I, and when, I, when, I, when I heard about it, when I, when I heard about this scripture, this scripture here, it really made me, made me think a lot, a, lot of, a lot of things. Now watch what Jesus said. What verse did I give you? 28, didn't I? I gave 28. You, you gave me 29. You don't have 28? Well, I'll quote 28. I gave you 29, don't you, Jackie? You got 28? Okay. 28 says, you don't have 28 yet? Okay. 28 says, let me see what Jackie said. Walk with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you tired? Are you tired of religion? Worn out on religion? Are you tired of it? Religion will wear you out. The devil, watch this. The devil loves religion. Huh? Okay. The devil loves religion. He goes to church. His demons will be the first one there. Because they want to try to do everything like God, but they're not God. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you recover your what? Your life. Now guess what? So that tells me you don't have a life. When, you, when you're not in the finish, you don't have a life. You think you got a life. The world thinks you got a life. But you don't have a life. I'm going to read it again. Are you tired of worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. And you recover your life. Now, you, what do you say you're going to do? You recover your life. And I'll show you how to take a, a real what? What are we talking about? Rest. We got to rest in God. When you're in faith, you're in rest. You're not in faith, you're not in rest. I'll say it again. When you're in faith, you're in rest. When you're not in faith, you're not in rest. Verse 29. Walk with me. Now, y'all might wonder why I put this on a couple of times. I put this scripture on. Because you know, sir, we got to get this. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. How did Jesus do it? We can read. We can read the Bible and see how Jesus did everything he did. In Gethsemane, when, when, we, when he was going through the torture, but he was still in the finish. Hello? You, you, Satan might come your way, but you're in the finish. Hello? You might suffer. But you're in the finish. Walk with me. 
Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of faith. Learn how grace works in your life. God already did everything in grace. It's already done. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Verse 30. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Oh, I love that. Freely and lightly. Say it again. Freely and lightly. See? You, you can go back in our society today where it says the last day man should lose his pleasures of life. Have, have, have that happen? People don't care about people. People, they, they care about electronic people more than they really care about real people. I'll say it again. They care more about electronic people than they really. Some of your relatives care more about the electronics than they care about you. Why? They have got a relationship with the electronics. See, let me tell you this to you. If I spend my time, if I spend my time and I'm not in the finish and I spend my time here, I'm going to want more of that. Because that's where my time is spent. If I spend more time in the Word, I'm going to want more of what? The word. word. If I have a relationship with God and more relationship with Him, I'm going to have a more, should I say, I'm going to love having a relationship with Him because it brings peace, hello, patience. It brings redemption to my life. It brings righteousness to my life. I got the Holy Ghost. You know the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is what the Father is. His character, what he is. He'll tell you what to do, when to, and how to do it. And sometimes people are not going to agree with it, how to do it. See, let me tell you, say this to you. God all the time, all the time is not going to tell me what he tells you to do. He tells you to go do it. He expects you to go do it. Because guess what? You're the one, you're the one responsible for doing it, not God. Or oh, oh, not that person. But you're responsible for doing it. If God said, go this way and do it, go. I remember one time I went to New York and I didn't have no money for the hotel. I had the hotel room, but I had no money. You all heard what I said to you. And, 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 and two guys came up to me. They were, looking, they, they were looking for a room. Well, I said, I got a room, but I, 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 I didn't have no manifestation of money in my hand. So they said, well, look, you can get a bunk and sleep out in the bunk, and we, we'll just you, we'll get a cot, and we'll, we'll, you'll have a room, and you, this way you can, you can work the crusade. Now, guess what? God told me to go. That didn't make no sense whatsoever. Did it make sense? No. But in this realm, in this realm, it might, it might make sense in this realm. It might not make, should I say, it might not make sense in this realm. Because you should stay home. You should stay home, forget it, you ain't going to work. But you say, who told me to go? So guess what? That's right. The Holy Spirit is your guy, your comforter, your friend, your advocate. He's on the inside of you. That's when Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. He will guide and he will direct you how to go. See, some people think, some people think they hear from the Holy Ghost because they hear emotions. You, can't, you don't go by emotions. You don't go by what you feel. You don't go by none of those things. Because you go by what you feel, you're going to miss God. You're going to miss him every time. But he says, but watch this. Keep company with me and you will learn freely and lightly. How, how many of you want to learn freely and lightly? And you know what? I heard, heard my spiritual father say this. He said, you know, son, if, if he had five people 
there, and that's all he ministered to. Five people at the end, if he's doing what God told him to do, that's all that matters. Because a lot of times what happens is that the devil tried to get you over that realm where well, maybe you get some more folks over here. It ain't about folks. It's about what God tells you to do. God controls the folks. Hello? And that's what we got to learn. If you're in the peace, if, if you got the peace of God about it, do what God tells you to do. Don't do what nobody else tells you to do. Do what God tells you to do. Because you are going to, every individual, you got Jesus in you, you're accountable to God. You don't have your life no more. Your life is his life. Everybody said, Jesus' life Jesus is, my life. is my life. That's what it's all about. So we got to do that. We got to do, we got to live the life of Jesus. Find out how Jesus lived. You know, I, I tell the story sometimes about the lepers. And, they say, and Jesus said, weren't there ten lepers cleansed? But Jesus said, only one came back and God, 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 God gave God the glory. Why was this? You got to understand something. Those guys didn't get the manifestation of the heal, but Jesus told them to go, but only one of them obeyed Jesus. But Jesus called them all healed. Jesus said it was done. It was what? And one gave God the glory. And then it said, and then the man was made what? Whole. He was made what? Whole. You see what I'm saying? See the difference what I'm saying? So those guys, they, they weren't tuned into Jesus' faith. They weren't tuned into the faith of God. But the one guy was. Remember on the, Jesus said the same thing on the position about the going to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Father Jesus was concerned. He went to sleep. Where are we going? I'm going to the other side. Jesus echoed that we're going to the other side. The other guy said, Master, cares not we perish? They echo what's not in the finish. Jesus said the finish. They echo the unfinished. You see the difference what I'm saying? And Jesus said, and Jesus rebuked, what did Jesus do? Jesus rebuked the wind and the wind sea. How was Jesus able to rebuke the wind? Because guess what? Jesus was in the what? Jesus was in the what? Finished. But they weren't. Amen. Praise God. We all blessed today. Amen. Yeah, y'all learn. Well, next week we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of a lot of Hebrew. You won't be here. You're gonna be amazed how the translators was very sincere. Fathers, you know, they were sincere what they wrote. That some of them wrote some things based on the religion based on what they felt it might say, but they didn't get a full minute. And the word, let me say this to you real quick. Remember I said something about the stress? Stress will kill you. That's when God don't want you to take care. The care, cares of this life bring stress to your body. Everybody says the cares, cares. of this life. Of this life. Of this life brings stress in your body. In the Hebrew, the word merit, called M-E-R-I-M-A, M-N-D means distractions. That's what Satan he brings distractions to you so that guess what? He can stress you out. Why? He can, so he, so he wants to stress you out. You get stressful, you can't do it. Now guess what? Now his and his demon can work the distraction because you let them. You just stay over the finish. You stay... Hey, you, you was over in, in his realm. And like I said, said last week, demons do not have voices. They use your voice. When I said voice, they don't have no, they have no voice in the earth. They have a voice, Father, talking to your head, 
but they don't have no voice to say something out in the world. So they use men, voices, to get what they want done in the earth. That's how they get what's done. Amen? Praise God. Well, now, we're going to continue to worship the Lord now. Give you the opportunity to make Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You might have said some things real, that was real strange to you today. And you might not know Jesus. Whether you know that, whether you accept Jesus or whether you don't or not, you have to realize that Jesus is the only way. And you know what? God did it in the finish that you're saved already. You have a problem with that? Put it up. It's One of the things that salvation, it comes to all. Everybody, Jesus died for the whole world. He died for you and me. He died that the whole world, man, and the whole world, as far as God concerned, is saved. And you're saved. You might not recognize that now, but guess what? He died for you. Only thing you got to do is receive the salvation that he gave for you. So we get an opportunity to do that right now. So Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Whether you know it or not, you just got saved. You just came out of the family of darkness into the light of God, their son. So if you receive salvation today, only thing you got to do is text, I'm saved, to 21000 for a free gift. We love you so very much, and God loves you, and the angels are having a party over you. Praise God. Now, you're at home right now. You might say, you should be a member of a local church. A church that's going to teach you God's word, going to teach you in Hebrew, what it means in Hebrew, because it's important. It can distort certain things. So if you would want to become an e-member, just to joining the 2100, and we'll send you information on how you become a member of us. Amen. Praise God. Now, Henry is able to keep you from falling and give you peace and joy. God loves you and so do we. Until next week, God bless you.